Hi, I'm Ian and welcome back to Astro Time Traveller. In these four videos I'm going to show you how I captured and processed the Rosette Nebula. In the first two videos I'm going to show you how I use the ZWO ASI Air Pro as my management tool for capturing images. The first video will show you some of the theory around this tool, some of the screens that you can use and the aspects that make it really a very easy tool to capturing images with. In the second video I'm going to show you myself actually capturing the Rosette Nebula over a couple of nights from plate solving to focusing on stars to moving to the image to setting up guiding and to taking the image and to looking at images through the night. Then in the final two videos I'm going to show you how I process that image. In the first one I'm going to show you PixInsight and Deep Sky Stacker for processing the image up to the linear stage and in the final video I'm going to show you how I use PixInsight in the non-linear stage and do final touch-ups in Photoshop. And at the conclusion of the video you'll see a number of images that I ended up with having gone through those processes because inevitably you end up with different decisions around some of the different processing elements that take you in different directions and you'll see images of the Rosette Nebula with full stars, with less stars and some with no stars at all. So throughout these four videos hopefully you'll get a great idea of how the ZWO ASI Air Pro works and also some of the imaging steps that I take to get to a final image. So sit back, hopefully enjoy and hopefully learn a few things from some of the techniques I use. Uh, in processing these images. So here we are on my home page. If I click the ISA app, you open this screen, which is the introductory screen uh, for the ISAIR Pro, and then you come to the settings screen. On the left side, you have the date, time, location, which is uh, updated from Wi Fi, and on the right hand side, you have the detail around the equipment that you're using. I'm using the Skywatcher EQ6R Pro mount, and to do that, I put in here the EQ mod with Sky Safari as my mount, which is really useful. Then the next section down is around the uh, telescope you're using and in particular the focal length. To calculate that, sometimes you can have problems. You can either use the Celestial Wonders by putting in the details of your uh, pixel size, your focal length, and that will calculate out the image scale in particular, your arcs per pixel. Or you could actually take a picture, which I've done previously, and then put that through Astronomy Net, as you can see here, and that comes back and gives you that same information. In particular, if you're looking for the pixel scale, which is 2.54 arc sex per pixel. And you can use that to calculate your focal length. Initially, I had problems with the ISA Pro because I wasn't getting the right focal length. But once I calculated this through and put that in, then that worked much better. And it picked up the right focal length when taking the pictures of the stars. So you can use that calculation to do that. But it's important to get the right focal length onto your actual ISA Pro for the main camera. Then you also have the guide scope focal length, uh, the 280mm, which I use with mine, and then the two cameras, the main camera, which is my 294MC Pro, and my guide camera, which is the 120 mini. And then the other devices, I don't use either the filter wheel or the focuser, so I don't have those. They're not highlighted, they're shaded out as you can see in this particular settings. So that's really helpful, and I think that really works uh, very well as a setup to, uh, to start all the detail that goes into the Air Pro. So let's move on from this screen to the home screen. So you press Enter, and that takes you to this screen. Uh, let's just orientate ourselves with the screen. So at the top, you've got the different icons for settings and the cameras, uh, the telescope filter wheel, etc. Down the right-hand side, you've got the imaging requirements, which we'll come on to, including the, the big button for actually doing the imaging. Along the bottom, you've got the histogram, which is really useful when you're imaging. And on the left-hand side, you've got that histogram graph showing you're using that. You've got the guide 
to button to press for guiding and the plates hold button as well. So if we go on to the ASI Pro settings page, um, the first really important thing is it shows that which is your serial number for your ASA Pro, shows you your download speed. You can see here I'm actually uh, wired through the hotspot, so using the ISA Pro as my Wi-Fi. I also have my home Wi-Fi attached through the station mode. I've not uh, connected through the wired Ethernet. Um, it shows you your power output, your CPU temperature, and your under voltage warning if you need to. The power output's really useful because you've got four ports to use to power other devices. And you can see here I'm powering my camera and my dew heater on my camera through one of the ports, uh, which is helpful. So that's the pro setting page. If you then go to the camera page, uh, we'll see what happens on the main camera element. And uh, so we click on that and you can see it's my ISA 294 Pro. That focal length of 376 that I've calculated, uh, which I've discussed earlier, is really important to get that right. Because if you get it wrong to start with, it can't plate solve and it has problems actually, uh, therefore, being able to use the rest of the tool. You then have the gain here, which you can see you can play around with. So I usually keep it at unity gain about 120. And you have cooling. I've got cooling on here, but you can switch it off. Um, I have it on usually at about minus 10 or minus 20. You can play around with that. And then you have customized file name as well, which is really useful for when you actually want to use your imaging. So here you can have the type of image you're taking, a light, a flat, a dark, the image target, the number of seconds, the bin you're using, and importantly, things like the temperature, uh, which is helpful when you're actually processing the image later in the process. And then advanced settings, I haven't really touched those. I leave those pretty much uh, alone and leave them as they are. So that's the main camera settings. Let's now look at the guide camera. So if we click on the guide camera icon, that'll take you there. And you can see I'm using my 120mm mini with a focal length of 280. My gain I use at about 54. I do have a red 610 millimeter filter on the guide camera to bring out the stars better. So that's why I have gain a little bit higher than standard. Um, on the calibration and the duration steps, I've followed Astro Blender, who uh, recommended moving down from the 2000 standard to these ones, and I found those work really well. I haven't touched uh, the auto restore calibration, but dithering settings, they're very important. And I'll talk about that because I found dithering very, very successful in the imaging that I've been doing. And here you can see on the differing settings, I've got it moving by two pixels. Um, the interval is every three images, and I wait for a stability of two seconds and a settle time of five seconds. And so far I've found that really does take out the hot pixels and really improves the imaging. So I highly recommend using differing. But if we go back to the uh, camera settings, we can then move on to the telescope settings. And although I have the Skywatcher EQ6R Pro, that doesn't actually come up in the telescope list. So you have to select uh, the EQ mod with Sky Safari. It works really well. The BUD number, the 9600, is really the right thing to put in there to make sure that it works with your um, mount. The latitude and longitude basically come from Wi-Fi. And on the Meridian flip settings, what I found is it's really useful to use these. Um, and you can set the time to stop before the Meridian Flip. I found so far when I've been using the Meridian Flip, it works perfectly. The telescope uh, slews round and then restarts again. And on the rest of here, the two probably important areas are the home position, which I go to after polar aligning. Uh, and then I do a plot so before I go to a target or a star for focusing. And also the view objects. So you can select that uh, through this menu as well to look at the different objects that the SI Pro gives you. And here's the example of the, uh, the Mesa objects, and you can scroll down through these and want to do. Or you could use the uh, question mark on the top right to select something under a, an M or an NGC. Um, and also when you do that, it will bring up your history. So here's some of the uh, images and the objects I've looked at recently. So, for example, I would perhaps select Riga to go and focus my uh, telescope on that um, using this method to do that. So that's really helpful, um, and you can go all the way back from there back to the telescope settings. And then if you look at that, if you come back to the home page, the other areas, as I said, which I don't really use are the uh, filter wheel. I don't really have uh, filters, so I don't use that. And nor do I use the automatic focuser because I don't have that either. On the storage settings, I do have the uh, USB uh, stick, which I put in with about 57 gigabytes of data. So plenty to store the images through the evening. And that's pretty much everything on those top icons. 
So if you go back to the home page, the next thing really is on the right hand side, which is the imaging elements. And you can see you've got preview there highlighted. But if you uh, select on that, you can then see you've got focus, you've got PA for polar alignment, the preview itself, or auto run for setting up your imaging train, or live if you want to do live stacking, or video if you want to use video for doing uh, planetary, which I have actually done some recently of and worked really well on the moon. Then you have uh, beneath that, you've got the uh, bin selection. So you can tap on that and you get uh, the option of bins one, two, four. And then you've also got the exposures. So you can decide when you're doing preview, how long you want your exposure to be from very limited up to quite long. If you just want to test what's in your image when it comes back up on screen. So that's the home page. And across on the other side, you've got the histogram. And of course, the important thing is you've got your guide. So when you click on the guide side, up comes the graph at the top. When you click on that, it will take you to the guiding application to set up your guiding on your image. And if you unclick it, it obviously takes it off the screen. So that's the home page. It's really good. Um, you can plate solve at any time, which I found very useful. And obviously using the histogram as you go through the process is also very, very helpful as well. So most of that is pretty self uh, intuitive as you open it up and uh, I found the SI Pro to be a fantastic device because it's made polar alignment and then going across to targets and imaging very very simple uh, much simpler than setting up all of your computer outside with cables. So now let's move on to focusing so if we pick up the focus icon here's the focus screen you can see the green square in the middle is where you would target your star and you can actually move this around to highlight the star you want so let's move it over here and then you click the uh, image button on the right and it takes a two second exposure and takes you into uh, a picture of the star you've taken. Then you click the circle with the plus on the left side and it brings you into this screen, which will show you as it's taking the image of the star, that image on the left hand side. And it will give you readings on the two right hand side boxes of either the star size or the peak of the star. And it's important to get uh, those as good as you can. You can change the star if you want and move it around again. And then again, take another picture and then focus in by using the circle with a plus back in to get again the peak of that star that you want. So that works pretty well. I use it usually after I've done my Batonoff mask because I find I get really good focus with that. And then this helps to confirm that I've got a good star uh, size by the low number or a star peak by the high number. And that's really what I use this for mainly. Uh, are using focusing um, but it's good to use that when you can so after that what I would normally do is go back and then if we look at the other elements that we've got under the, the list of imaging you have the live option so here you could actually do live stacking if you want to I've not used that so far but it's one of the key things that uh, is there to use one of the other areas is using videoing if you're doing planetary so here's the video screen I have a number of options under video I have used this I did the moon recently you can change the gain and the white balance and the exposure. And you also have a series of resolution levels. So uh, here you've got a resolution level at 720, let's say. And you can see the bottom left-hand side, the frames per second, um, is a certain value compared on the resolution you're using. So if we uh, click on this in a second and actually just do some recording, you can see how uh, quickly and what the actual resolution is that it's doing. So... Let's do that and here you go and with these few seconds on the bottom left you can see the resolution is around 18 19 frames per second now if you change that resolution so if we stop that and move from the 720 down say let's say to 240 you're actually going to get a higher frame rate per second so here we've started again and you're getting 30 frames per second as i say i've only used this once at the recent full moon and i found it actually captured a really good full moon through this um, need to play around with the white balance a bit and the exposure length but that seemed to work well for me so I was pretty happy with that. So if we now move back to the main screen what we can now look at is the auto run. So here's where you actually set up your standard imaging. So you go to this page and if you press reset, press reset you can select uh, what you want to image and the exposure and the number of images. So if we go in and cancel the second one on the first one here we can change the exposure length to any length we like. So let's say uh, 180 seconds, and we can decide how many we want to repeat. Let's say 150 here. And then we could add another one. So if we wanted to use, say, the next set of images at a 
less exposure, say 30 seconds, uh, and this time we want to do, let's say, 20. On each of those, you can put your own numbers in, but there are some default ones. Once you've got that, you can then select it. At the bottom, you can see it shows you the estimated time that it will take and how much storage it will use. And then you go back to the main screen and you're ready to roll. So what you then do is just press the button for image capturing and you can see it will start to uh, capture the image. And that's really all there is to it. So that's the end of part one. In part two, I'm going to take you through my workflow. And here you can see the steps that I take to image using the uh, Air Pro. And in part two, using the Rosette Nebula as an example, I'll take you through each of these steps and demonstrate exactly what I do to set up polar line, get the telescope on the home focus, move to the target, start imaging, reviewing, etc. Um, so I think you hopefully you'll find that interesting. So if you want to see how it works in practical terms, join me in part two.